What does it mean to be human? A thousand years ago, what it meant to be human was a little different than today. Before, we as a species were separated by the things we were able to do. One of our amazing gifts being imagination. We used that imagination and we created intelligence. And now this intelligence are able to do some of the things that were prior just reserved for us. And they're good at it. Today we're leaving two lives. One is the life we actually live and the other is the life we advertise online. Businesses, families, friends, our kids, grandkids will all have to deal with this paradox. And I can promise you that this double existence of the real world and the virtual world is having an effect on us. In some ways it's obvious, in some ways it's very subtle. And so in this era, it becomes very, very difficult to find things of meaning, things of value, things of substance, things like love. Where do you start? Where do you begin? Because today, what you see is often most certainly not what you get. So the conclusion I made was that being human today is no longer about the what, but it's more about the how, how we do things. The operational automation, machine learning, predictive analysis. And, and I don't know if predictive analytics scares anyone else. It scares me a little bit. So these things brought me to the how. You know, I was out, I was, I was showing a, a friend of mine a video on a phone and it was taking a long time to load. And she says, why is it taking so long? Don't you have unlimited data? And I said, no, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get that plan. And she looked at me with just this look of disdain and disgust. She said, why don't you have unlimited data? And I looked at her with a straight face and I said, I don't have unlimited data because if I had unlimited data, that means the amount of time I would spend looking at my screen would also be unlimited. I don't want unlimited data. I don't want my face in that screen. Today, we're willing to fight. We're willing to hold true to the things we believe in. Our isms, Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, he, she, vegetarianism, CrossFit, yoga, our ambitions, our friends, our families, our dogs. Me and you were not that different. I know it feels like that sometimes. Our uh, interests bisect heavily in the areas of gain and loss. With anything that is gained, something has to suffer a loss. It's not always in the same categories, it's not always in the same area, but with any gain comes some type of loss. So then it would serve to say that gain and loss have an inverse relationship. So then it stands in the real world or in any other world. Anytime you spend time here, you spend less time somewhere else. That means today we have to be living, loving, building relationships, all while tending the virtual gardens of our lives. And the second we're able to automate this little gesture, this beautiful, wonderful little gesture of a swipe, figuratively and literally we begin living two lives. And that goes for our kids as well. We now have to think about their years in the real world and what is their virtual age, because they're starting to divide. And the older they get, it's gonna be more and more of an interesting dichotomy to deal with. From a financial standpoint, it's extremely lucrative to live in that world, the virtual world, programming, coding. These kids have had amazing interests in that world. These kids have become adults and they have the key to the kingdom, the way things run. They have our numbers, they have our stats, they have everything about us. And all we can do is hope that people of integrity occupy those positions because some of the stuff they're doing is far beyond anything that I could compute. And I bet you even more money is being made in that world, which means as they get older, they have more and more of an incentive to live in that world. What is our incentive to get them to live in this world, come out and play in the park? How do we get them to come live, come outside, come enjoy the sun, get away from the screen, interact? Some of you say, so what? These advances are changing our lives. They're making it possible for us to do amazing things like FaceTime a friend, an old friend from across the globe, or making things a lot easier, cutting the time in half for what we do. And I agree with you. I'm not here to contest the gains. I think we all recognize the gains. I'm just here to point our attention to the losses a little bit. And if you take this tiny little microcosm of human interaction and you imagine where else we could be losing, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. And the interesting thing today, things like fear and love and romance, we have an abundance of places to get them today. So what starts happening? We stop producing those things because we can get them anywhere. That little synthesized jolt of passion, turn on the TV, turn on the Netflix. Man, machine world, it's interesting. Now we're relying on computer-generated algorithms to not only decide things, but to decide futures. You've heard that quote, there's always three sides to every story, your side, their side, and the truth. And I think right in the middle is our truth. 
we're both the problem and the solution. What we do no longer determines what it means to be human. The biggest separation between me and you, if there is any, is not what we do, it's how we do our work. And of course, all of us are, are different. Not, not all of us had brothers. Not all of us had mothers. Not all of us had others telling us that they love us. Not all of us had dads, but all of us have scabs. Yeah, all of us have bags from all of the ex-lovers. Not all of us had winters. Not all of us had summers. Not all of us had suppers where we sit down with each other. But all of us have a chance to change when we discover that all of us have pain. And on some of the bad days, when some of us can't escape the negative thoughts in our brain, hoping they just go away. Not all of us have luck, but all of us have cuts. And all of us have stuff that we're forced to cover up. And on some of the bad days, when some of us can't escape these negative thoughts in our brain, we remember what it is to be human, that we're connected. It doesn't matter what your interests are. I think being human is uh, taking things you find wonder-filled. It doesn't matter what those things are, but things you find wonder-filled. Whatever it is, taking those things and sharing them with people that you care for. That's what it is to be human.